Lawn Design Tools present and future. My name is Megan Turner. I work at Digital Echidna. You can follow me there at mturner on Twitter. I have shared my slides on uh, Google Slides today, so if you'd like to follow on your laptop or phone, you can follow that link there. All right, and just a little bit of background on the company I work for, if you're not aware. Uh, Digital Kidna is a Drupal shop located in London, Ontario. We do different things from sales support to content marketing and management. We love using Drupal and are proud to use it. We are a team of 60 plus Echidnas, proudly, and still growing strong. So before getting into the design tools today, I wanted to go over just a little bit background of the overall process before getting into that. So before going into the design process, we need to be able to get the information from the client so you have something to work off of. So following process is going to help uh, create a clean transition in between each step. So if we go and get the information from the client, define our goals, target audience, toning content, what's important to the users coming to the site, the business and the client, we can really target the design after that. And other things coming into role, like the site map, what kind of site, are we starting from scratch, do we need to do a rebrand of the colors and logos of the site, do they even have a brand that we can use for the site? So all these kind of come into play before we can get into this process. So, and then getting into that core design phase, once that is established, then you can get into the development and then eventually having your finished product for your client. So jumping deeper into the design process before touching on those design tools so we know what they're actually being used for. So the design process is an approach for breaking down a larger project into manageable chunks. Architects, engineers, scientists, and other thinkers use this process as well to solve a variety of problems. We define the steps needed to tackle each project and we hold all those ideas throughout the whole process using this. So specifically today I'm talking about a web design process. So quick overview is we got our wireframes, style tile, which is like a new board there, uh, comp, and then your prototype. So let's just break down these steps a little bit more so you know what they entail exactly. So jumping into wireframe. Not so much design at this point, you're more so getting those views and content types for Drupal specifically. So different types that we can go into and a few different ways. So wireframing is very black and white, like I said, we're not introducing any colors or images yet. We don't want the client to see that kind of thing. It's more so the layout of the pages that we're working on. So boxes representing images, lines representing where the text is gonna go, and working out that functionality for each of the pages. And we can, so we can do that in like a sketchbook if you don't have a lot of time and you just really, really wanna like sketch it out quickly before going into a design process because it gives you a better idea. Or going in uh, the method of using a whiteboard, which is really great. We use this at Echidna because it's really good for collaboration in the team setting. You can get the designers, developers, and managers in the room, and you can really work together working out how the pages are gonna be before moving into the design. As well as, there's a lot of online tools we can be using as well, where you can still collaborate with your team members. They can comment on those, on those wireframes as well. And the online process is good too, because it kind of gives the chance for people to kind of comment at their own time. Like if everyone can't get into a meeting one day, it kind of gives them that flexibility. So once we have a solid wireframe, we can also work on the style tile, which is like a mood board. So the feeling and mood of the set. And it's important to know which direction you want to go in when you're making these style tiles, because it's going to contain a ver a various design elements of what your UI could look like. So example and going in deeper with the style tiles. So. Typically, it's going to be an online program doing this, such as like a program like Sketch. And it's helping portray the feeling of the site. As we can see the colors, there's some action words there, fonts, icons, imagery, like input fields, and those kind of things there. 
And then here's just another example to help you get the idea of what kind of things you could expect on a mood board or style tile. Once we got that style down and we got the wireframes, we can really go into working on what everything is going to look like when it comes together. So moving into the comp phase, there's a lot of resources out there to create this. So this is why it's a typical idea of how comp is made. Since technology has advanced, we can use online programs. So we can choose to make a full comp page or you can do a atomic design method where you're designing in sections. So forms and headers and footers or we can do the full page method which I'm going to show you here. So this is just an example of a comp for a client that if you want to do a responsive design and this helps bring together all the stuff that we did in the style tile. So the forms, text, color, fonts, images and how it's all really flowing together there. It helps bring all the ideas together to form the page and I guess depending on the budget for the client, the more you can do or the more flexibility you'll have. So here's just the responsive, but you might want to do like a secondary page as well. So having home secondary and then that could show a little bit of functionality so they know what it's going to look like on the page. Once our comps are down, sometimes you can go into a prototyping phase where you're showing how it's going to flow a little bit. So there's a lot of online software programs I'm going to talk about that you can use for this. And it's more so like an interactive comp, if you think about it. And um, the client's going to be able to see how it functions. So here is just uh, an example of Marvell, which is a prototyping tool. And we've been able to upload our designs, export them for programs such as Sketch or Photoshop, and you'll be able to customize it. So making clickable boxes like on top of your comp. So say you have a login field, you'll be able to drag over a box and you'll be able to set a destination after the user is clicking that. So they click the login, let's say, and then it's going to go right to the home page. So it kind of gives a feeling of how everything is going to flow there with your comps. And then I'm just going to show a little example here. So here's an example on a vision. So here we just have, it's a static page, obviously, but if I click around here, you can see it kind of flows and you're seeing what kind of functionality or steps that are going to happen here. We don't see. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, right, so yeah, this is Envision and you can kind of see me when I click buttons here, which are just links to the different comps. It kind of shows that and you can even like go up here, click on your profile. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to the presentation. All right. So once all those are done, then obviously you're gonna have to go into the development stage, develop all this, and have your finished product. So now I'm gonna go more so into the process that we use at Echidna, some of the challenges we faced in the past with tools we've used, and diving into a bit deeper of what's coming to the future for us. So design tools definitely have advanced over the years, but before there wasn't a one-fit-all tool for comps and wireframes for us, we were using two different programs and there were quite a few cons using this method. So in the past we were using Illustrator for our wireframing and Photoshop to produce high fidelity comps. And Illustrator worked fine for what we needed it for, but it was difficult and it took a lot of time, mostly because there are certain things you can't do, like you can do in the program Sketch, where it makes the process a lot faster, like changing an icon, for example, in Illustrator. You would have to go click the icon on one page and click, fit, like, change it on each page, whereas Sketch has things called symbols and styles, where you can set those, and if you change one, it changes all across. And then Photoshop similar in that manner, but it's also a raster, raster based program and in order to get those high res comps to give to the client, the file size ended up being really huge and sometimes ending up Photoshop crashing. <laughs> so our present solution is using Sketch and it's miles ahead of Illustrator in terms of wireframing comp 
comes to our concern. Photoshop still has its uses and we still use Photoshop and Illustrator, but more so image editing and logo icon, big vector design based stuff. So it's about 80% sketch doing the comps and whatnot. So just going in a bit of sketch if you've never known or heard about it. Sketch is a great tool. It was founded in 2008 in the Netherlands. It's a vector based workflow and it makes really beautiful high quality artwork from start to finish. Um, top companies are using it today, Google, Apple, Facebook, and much more. This is a much better solution for us because it's one program, has a large supportive community, there's a lot of third party tools out there that you can use, and it's a much cleaner UI than what we were using before, so it's very clean and has, right, has what we needed right there and not any extra things. Um, another benefit as well is there's smaller file sizes with the high fidelity comps that we're producing. Um, now going into the future, now obviously I, I'm not a fortune teller or anything, I can't predict what's coming. Um, but as we go and as we grow and technology is advancing, we are trying new things and trying to incorporate a better and more efficient process for us that's going to benefit the company, benefit our clients. But Anyways, moving on. Design is not just what it looks, what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. Does anyone know who said this? Any? This is Steve Jobs. So we can have the best design website, but if it doesn't work in an efficient way for our users, this could result in a bad website for the user experience when they're going on there. And this is kind of introducing me and talking to about pattern. Pattern Lab is a great HTML prototyping tool. And it's atomic design based prototyping tool, which if no one's familiar with atomic design, um, it includes atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages, kind of in mind when you're designing. So atoms, for example, being form labels, a button, or a font. Molecules, for example, being the groups of elements, such as having your search input field with the form label and the button together. And then the organisms being groups of organisms, uh, groups of molecules, and the atoms, so standalone re reusable components. And then moving into templates, these provide um, context relative to molecules and organisms, helpful for designers and the client because it's grouping all those together to produce the final there. And finally, the pages. So it's the instant of the template, but putting it, swapping out that placeholder and putting in their content there, which is giving a more accurate, accurate representation of what the user will see. And different languages it's available in. We can use this for Drupal. There's Mustache. There's just a Twig version. And there's also a thin version, which is very customizable. There's a lot of benefits of using this program. So it has a focus on Drupal, which is great for us at Echidna, since that's what we're using. Uh, there's a lot of plugins available. The code is very usable, so once you're at, done designing the pattern lab, you can take that template code and apply it to your project because it's already there. So you're only, using, you're only making the template once, so that's a great process. And you can see everything coming back together. It's better than just a static comp. And um, the competition, sorry, actually. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So, because it's a little bit complex idea to get a hold of. So I just did a fresh install on my local of the pattern lab for Drupal. And this is what it looks like when you first get it. So there's a menu up here which shows you that you can look at the different elements. So the atoms I was talking about, the molecules and organisms, templates, the pages. So as we scroll down, we can see all the different elements here. And like even going into the sub things there where you can see all the different things that it can do. So like this is an example of a homepage bringing all the elements before together and what that would look like.
All right, um, now moving into some of the competition tools and other tools are out there, because obviously we can't use every single tool. There has to be, we have like a process of what ones we're using. So there's a lot out there and once you find like what works best for you, you can implement that in your process with making sure it provides awesome results and experience for your client in mind. So some other tools that are out there are such as Sketch as we were talking about before that people are using, uh, Adobe XD, Zeppelin, and Envision. Some prototyping tools such as uh, Marvel and Envision. So some of these tools, so Envision has a lot of great aspects to it actually. You can do mood boards in there, some prototypes, and you can even create your wireframes in that tool. Marvel is similar in the type in the sense that it's just the prototyping tool though. And then we have the Zeppelin, which uses style guides. So um, developers and designers are in the focus on that sense. So you would import your sketch files in this and you have access to the CSS borders with colors and more. So I would import a page and then I could click on an element and on my column on the, on the right there will come up all the CSS for that element. So say it was a box, it would say the border width, the color, the dimensions, and that makes it very useful. So in terms of other tools while you are creating comps, and going through the design process I'm going to talk about here. So some stock image resources you can go to or design assets. So one of the best sites I love to go on is Unsplash. They have really high quality images on there, which is great because you want the high quality when you're creating those comps if you just need the placeholder for the moment. And then in terms of design assets, we have the Google fonts, Font Awesome, Noun Project, and um, so now project is has all your icons on there you can search and Google fonts obviously is fonts it's great because it gives font pairing suggestions and you can download them you can download from thin to bold you can kind of customize it that way and font awesome works with your CSS so you implement it there and that's for icons as well And just to recap, recap cap, sorry, <laughs> and conclude, there's definitely no hard and fast answer to what the right solution is in long term. There's always new technologies that are constantly being presented and updated, but by understanding what your needs are, the client's needs, and the pros and cons of the tools that are out there, you can make the right decision to improve the user experience and productivity. Any questions? Wait, sorry, like, what was that? It's a software that I used a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I, have, I cannot remember the name. And you, by chance, would know, like, you make it a whole app. And Just like the designs in there, too? And where it's all the functionality of the app you can have. Like the code and oh, some design? Uh, I'm not no. sure, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you for coming.